In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He gave dominion to men and women. Through mismanagement, dominion was lost. Blessings became curses. Order became chaos. Life became death. But through the finished work of Christ, dominion is restored. Creation is groaning. Creation is waiting. Creation is in anticipation for the manifestation of restored dominion. Now, it is time to break the chains of limitations. Is the season to recover lost glories. It is time to unleash kingdom responsibility. 2024, our year of manifestation. Please stand and welcome our senior pastor, Dr. Frank Ofosu Apia. This is our year of manifestation. That is the word that God has given to us and our organizations everywhere in the world. That is our word. Every year, God gives us words to guide us. They are not cliches. They are not platitudes. They are not filling the gap things. These are things that we, we seek from the heart of God for. Um, Every church, every organization gets some specific words for their congregation. Sometimes people say, but why is God not speaking to everybody at the same time? God will speak to everybody at the same time. From the island of Patmos, Jesus spoke to seven different churches with seven different messages based on their pe peculiar needs. So it cannot be that one word. I mean, we have the Bible, but out of that, God seeks expression for congregations. So he says to the church of Atheria, that's and so, church of Philadelphia, church of Ephesus, he has different things for different churches. And now it comes out of Romans chapter 8 and verse number 19. Romans chapter 8, verse number 19. And it talks about the fact that the whole of creation, for the earnest expectation, Paul the, Paul the apostle is writing and says that for the earnest expectation of the creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. And I said sons also means daughters. So don't exempt yourself from it. I'm a male, but the Bible calls me the bride of Christ, and I'm okay with it. I'm cool with it. So that, that's fine. No, no, no worries at all. But what is interesting is the fact that creation is groaning. There's something that is amiss as a result of Adam's transgression. Adam was created and given dominion over the earth. The dominion mandate still works. It's still, it's still operative. And when we talk about dominion, we are not talking about dominating somebody. No human has the right to dominate another person, either through intimidation or manipulation. We have to have dominion over creation. Make sure that creation, creation orders themselves, which means when something goes wrong here on earth, God expects us to fix it. We don't call him, he will call us. That is why God came to Adam and said, Adam, where are you? That was not a geographical question. It was missing the point question. That I placed you here in the garden, what has happened? Am I talking to somebody? And Adam, according to, according to Paul, uh, was subjected the whole creation to futility. And because of that, the earth is groaning, it's waiting for you and I to be manifest. And when we talk about the word manifest in the Greek, manifest, Phanerosis or acapulosis, whichever one it is in the Greek, it means that it's to make something visible. Something that is hidden, but it is now made visible. That is manifestation. And for many of us, we've been hidden for too long. I said for many of us, we've been hidden for too long. And it is time for us to be manifest in the world. We've told our family that we've given our lives to the Lord Jesus. We are born again. We are Christians. We go to church. We carry sometimes 25-pound King James Bibles. You know, we are Coca-Cola drinking, food-tapping Christians. You know, we sing the songs. We run around the building. We swing on the chandeliers. We speak in all kinds of tongues, you know. I take a ride on my Honda time, my boat You know, all those things we speak in them. And yet, there's nothing to show for. And sometimes, unbelievers look at you and wonder, but you go to church all the time. Why is your life like this? 
And the saddest is when we continually go to borrow from them. When the Bible says that we shall be lenders and not borrowers. There's something wrong with the picture. And God says, no, we have to put things back in order. You know, on Friday, the word that came was that we have to correct errors. Did, did anybody remember that? We have to correct some errors. They said there's an evil that I've seen under the sun. It's like an error that is proceeding out of, out of, out, out of a ruler. Servants are riding on horseback and princes are walking. Say there's something wrong with the picture. We need to fix it. We really need to fix it. That is what we're going to do this year. It also means, it, manifestation also means to throw light on something. You know how sometimes people walk into a theater or people are operating in a, a theater and all the lights are dimmed and there's a spotlight on the one who is doing the business as it were. God wants to throw a spotlight on you. Your family members must begin to take notice that there's something different about you. It also means to reveal something. You've been hidden for too long. It, it means to, be, to reveal something. And this is our mandate this season. It is the intention of God that you and I are revealed to the world as true sons and daughters of the covenant. The Lord Jesus used several metaphors to explain us. And one of them, he said, you are salt and you are light. Salt doesn't make a lot of noise, but salt announces his presence. You agree with me? Is there anybody who has eaten beefy salt before? Beefy salt, anybody? But how many of you have eaten salty beef? Anybody eating foody salt before? Yeah, I'm sure, maybe. But salty food, I'm sure. The salt doesn't make noise, but makes you know that it's there. He says, you are the light of the world. We, are, we, 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 we complain too much, we protest. But you don't curse the darkness, you turn on the light. And even though Jesus said we are the light, for a lot of us, our switches are still off. We need to turn it on. So that the world will see the glory of God. Am I talking to somebody? For example, for, it says that we have to manifest ourselves as true sons. So people must see us and realize that we belong to God. Let me give an example. If somebody looks at you and says to you, man, you look like your father. What does the person mean? There could be several things about your father that you look like. Maybe your facial appearance, your gait, your walk. You, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, people see me and sometimes, I mean, they might not even know me, but they look at me and immediately, where, if I go to wherever I was born, they know where I'm coming from. Uh, you know what I mean? Your traits, some of the things you, you, you manifest, your talking, your wisdom, it, it, it's there. It's like this little young guy who went to college for the first time. And he came back from college and was totally different. He had one of those interesting haircuts like the barber didn't finish working before they got up. You, you, know, you know those haircuts? <laughs> You know, and you know, his jeans were ripped like he has been shot out of a, a, a cannon. And his sweater was a bit longer than his head, everything. And he was standing in front of the house with his dad. And he said, John, you look like a fool. Look at you. You went to college and is that how you turned out? You look like a fool. And just as he said that, the next door neighbor also came out of the door. So they said, hey, wow, John, you're back from college. Man, you're looking like your dad. <laughs> and the boy said, he was just telling me that, you know. <laughs> But the, don't look at your dad. <laughs> but, but you know, <laughs> we, we manifest his attributes. And that is what creation is waiting for. Creation is waiting for the mani your manifestation, not your explanation. We have to show for the glory, the reason for which Christ came to die for us. And we started this journey last Sunday. And our lead scripture was Luke chapter 13, verse 6 to 9. That's what we're going to get into today as we do this series on this year also. And so if you are not here last week or you are between last week and this week, you've forgotten everything, we leave them all on our platforms. You can find them on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all the platforms, they are still there for you. So we're going to get right into it. Now this is the master, the teacher, the carpenter from Galilee teaching. And he says that he spoke this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came seeking fruit on it and found none. Then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, Look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why does it use up 
the ground. But he answered and said to him, Sir, let it alone this year also, until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well, but if not, after that you can cut it down. That was our foundation scripture, and that is what we're going to meddle with for the next couple of weeks. We established that the Lord Jesus used a particular way of communication called parables. In the Greek, it's parabole, throwing alongside. That's the literal thing. It is telling, using natural things, everyday things, everyday occurrences to teach deep spiritual truths. Parables were told to make people think. In fact, Jesus' first parable was the parable of the seed, the word of God. And after he had shared it, that a, a sower went out to store, you know, one seed, four different areas, and only one gave out fruit and gave the reason. And the disciples came to him privately and said, what does it mean? We didn't get it. And Jesus said, if you don't get this, then you'll not get any other one. And he says that the seed is the word of God. And so it's important that you understand these parables. Many times we, we, don't, we don't really take these parables. Some of the stories that Jesus told, I think the church has over-spiritualized them. They are things to make us think about our normal, everyday occurrences as Christians. And in this particular parable, there are four players that Jesus is talking about. Number one, he said, a certain man planted, a, that certain man, you look at it, it's God the Father. He had planted his garden. He has planted something, he has planted you in our garden. Number two, he talks about the fig tree. And the fig tree is you and I, God's people, that he has saved to bear fruit. Jesus said that you did not call me, but I called you and I ordained you that you may go out and bear fruit, that your fruit may remain, so that anything that you ask the Father in my name, he will give it. One of the best ways of answered prayer is to go bear fruit and let your fruit remain. That was a groan, wasn't it? Can you say an amen before I jump on your chair also? <laughs> thank you, thank you. And the the third, thing, the third thing was the vineyard. The man planted the tree, the fig tree, in his vineyard. And the vineyard is the earth. That is where we are. Psalm 115 and verse number 16 says that the heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth has he given to the sons of men. That is why when you die here on earth, we don't expect to see you walking around Walmart. <laughs> you must be gone. Amen? Amen? You must be gone. You are gone. Please go. We don't expect to be seeing you, you know. <laughs> one of the things that really bothers me, any of you have heard of ghost stories? And people, somebody said in the room, I said, I, I see things moving in my room. There's and I said, tell the ghost, there's a vacuum cleaner. If they want to move things, let them vacuum for you. They do everything except good things. You know, then the fourth player is the keeper of the vineyard, the vine dresser, who is the Lord Jesus Christ. So, let's look at our scripture again, very quickly. The Bible says that a man planted a tree in the vineyard, and I'm going to say some very heavy-duty things. The man planted the tree, where? In his vineyard. Not somebody else's vineyard, not randomly, but purposefully in his vineyard. And what do I learn out of this? What I learn is that God has planted you where he has planted you by his divine counsel. You are not an accident. You did not get here by chance. You may have followed somebody to church, or you may, you may have done something, whatever, but God has an intention for your life. Sometimes we even stumble into blessings. Sometimes even God's purpose may be planted in human weakness and frailty. I remember the story of Jacob who was running away from his brother. He was tired. He was hungry. He was, he was, he was, he was afraid. And in the night, he, he was so poor that he couldn't afford a hotel. The open skies was his hotel and the stone was his pillow. And yet at that place, at that inauspicious place, the Bible says that he came to a certain place. And at that place where he thought there was nothing happening, the heavens were opened over him. And he saw angelic activities. So sometimes, he was, whilst he was running away from his brother, he, he bumped into the church that had not been known in the Old Testament. He said, this is the house of God. The presence of the Lord is here, and I didn't know it. 
So sometimes God encounters us, but in this particular place, you've got to understand in your life that God plants you in places for a reason and for a purpose. Many times, today's generation, we are so flippant. We are very much like America. We don't like California. We get a U-Haul and off we go to Maine. And when it snows, then we miss Florida. Then we crisscross all over the states. Listen, in the economy of God, things are not so. You don't transplant yourself, self-transplant, because you happen not to be on speaking terms with somebody in the church. God plants you for a reason and for a purpose. First Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 18. Verse, verse, it says that for to one 18, verse 18, not 8 please, verse 18. First Corinthians 12 and 18 says that the Lord has planted each of the members, all of us in the body, as he pleases. He has planted, he has set us members. Each of us in his body, just as he, not as I please, but he pleases. Which means, if God is pleased that I should be here in Carrie's house, it doesn't matter what you say to me or the attitudes that you put towards me, I am planted. Oh, you didn't get me. Those that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the house, in the courts of the God. That is why, listen, when you are planted, you flourish. And the Bible says that you shall be fruitful in your old age. One of the secrets to longevity and the beauty of longevity is to be planted in the house of God. Every two years, you don't leave a church. Every three minutes, you don't leave a church because leadership changed things and you are angry and you didn't like it. The same wisdom and anointing that made you that leader is the same anointing and wisdom that changed leadership. But what is it about? us that we don't understand that God has a purpose. We may not understand but it's not there. And understand that where he plants you is not always perfect. And so don't allow the imperfections of things that happen to, to just move you out of where you are. Don't ever forget my friend that Adam and Eve were planted in a perfect environment and yet they messed up. So the issue is, listen, Judas Iscariot, has the mo he had the most perfect pastor. And then look at what he did. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? So don't let imperfections that you see with one another. We are apart from me. Nobody is perfect. <laughs> there goes my perfection, isn't it? Let me tell you something. Blessings are location specific. Oh, Yes. The Lord said, when there was famine in the land, the Lord said to the prophet Elijah, go to the brook of Cherith, for I have commanded ravens to feed you there. If Elijah had decided that that place was not a good Airbnb, and he had gone one mile, he would have stabbed like everybody else. And after the brook was dried up, the Lord said to him, go now to Cherith, for I have spoken to a widow to sustain you there. There is a there for me. All my life, I want to be there. It may not look like there, which means it is not a matter of comfortability or convenient. It's a matter of the will of God. The man planted the vineyard. Number two, the thing that I see here that he came, you know, the man came to the garden year after year looking for fruit. And so the second thing is God expects you and I to be fruitful. That is, he wants you to manifest everything that he has placed on the inside of you. Please hear me, ladies and gentlemen, you are not a waste of time. It doesn't matter what you may have done in life. You may have done what they said you did, but you are not who they say you are. In this life, things happen to us. Sometimes we even press the self-destruct button. But you were placed here on earth for a reason and for a purpose. You were not brought on earth just to occupy space on earth and die and go and occupy some space underneath. If you do that, then life is not worth it. If death is the reason for life, then life is a tragedy. You carry purpose. Why are you, why, are you, why are you not a statistic? Of all the funerals that you've been to, why was one not yours? It means heaven has a purpose for you. The accidents that you escaped, the sicknesses that killed other people, he gave you life. It means there's purpose for you, my friend. And God expects that fruit to manifest. Peter, the great fisherman, writing in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, he said, for we are a chosen generation. We didn't choose ourselves, he chose us. A royal priesthood, a holy nation. Now look at it, his own special people. Listen, God didn't choose you and I because we were special. We are special because he chose us. 
You must walk with some swag, my friend. And know that you are special. Know that. And he said, the reason is that so that we may proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. So that. May, 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 I, have that, may, may I have that in the, in the amplified? May I have that in the amplified? The, 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 yeah, the, the classic one. If it's possible at all. If I can have that in the, in the amplified. I, I, I want us to look, look at this really properly. It's, um, if you don't have it, okay, it may come, it may come up. Sorry I'm, I'm putting you under pressure, but I, I, wanted us, I want the Amplified to float it a little bit because it really gets into breaking down this Hebrew thing for us who are Loganbeans. Did they just... I'm still learning English, my friends. It says that, but you are a chosen race. You know, sometimes when you are filling forms, they ask you what race. I put down human. I'm not going to force you to. I mean, I'm human. There are some, everything you take, yes. Yes, even before they finish, you're filled in the gaps. You are, oh, alcoholic. <laughs> you are, <laughs> no. Have some, have some confidence, you know. Say, what race? It's under human race. You trace it all back, it's in the garden. <laughs> a royal priesthood, a dedicated nation, God's own purchased special people. That you may set forth the wonderful deeds and manifest, display the virtues and perfections of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So Jesus came, shows you for a reason. That in this world, people must see if you're a businesswoman, people must see that your business is on another level. Am I talking to somebody? You must leave your footprints in the sense of time. Before you live here, successive generations must hear about you and know about you and thank God that you came here. I want to I wanna ask you a question. How would your death be announced? And who will come to your funeral? How would your death? There are, there, there are, there are people, there, there are different announcements of death. There are people who die and you hear the announcement with, 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 with deep shock and sorrow. We are very unhappy to announce the untimely evaporation of so and so. <laughs> and you go to the funeral and the widow is crying uncontrollably. People are all over the place. People are and you check the background and realize that they may not be crying because the guy died. But the death he left. <laughs> may it never happen to you. <laughs> you go to other funerals and the announcement says with gratitude to God. We are happy to announce the glorious <laughs> homegoing of so and so. You go to the, the funeral, the widow is in designers. I mean, uh, you no, know, she, she has her money, the glasses, you know, and people are trying to console her. She said, No, don't worry. She's thinking about the bank tomorrow, you know. May, may, may your death be like that in the name of the Lord. <laughs> but God, listen. <laughs> He expects you and I to be fruitful, but what happened? The Bible says that the, for three years, somebody say three years. Three. Are you learning? Yeah. For three years, the man kept coming over and over and over looking for fruit. He had planted you in his vineyard on this earth. You are born again. His spirit indwells you, but no fruit. Three years. There are people for three years, as I pastor you, I've observed you three years, no growth. The only growth is your gray hair. You grew, but you never matured. In the way you talk, in the way you deal with people. Paul said that when I was a child, when I was a Nepios, I spoke, thought, reasoned like a child. But when I grew up, a lot of our issues are not demon problems. They are lack of growing up problems. I have pastored people 20 years ago, they were children. Today, they are still children. Decision making, shock. Every small thing, they pick up their marbles and they go home. No game. When are we going to grow for the Lord to see fruit? When are we going to mature to the extent that you see, please forgive the crudeness of my terminology. I'm still trying to learn English as an African. But listen, why, why would you look at nonsense and say it doesn't matter? Why will you allow the functions of your body to function? Which means the eye has a function that the mouth may not participate. 
So sometimes when something happens, all you have to do is just to look and keep quiet. Three years, no growth. Three years, you are still holding grudges. You were angry before COVID-19. You are still angry until the next big one. And sometimes we ask you, what are you? You don't even remember why you are angry. And sometimes people have to warn people about you before you get there. That we don't know which one is coming. So, you, you know, so just be prepared. How, when are we going to grow? Three years. You are still bitter. Three years. You can't keep friends and friends can't keep you. Three years. Three years, my friend. You have had unforgiveness. Three years. When are you going to let it go, my friend? Three years, you are still going around in circles. Listen, if where you are going to looks like where you are coming from, you are going around in circles. Three years, long overdue, my friend. Why are you still wasting your time with nothingness? You have become the minister of useless affairs. Three years, my friend, let me tell you something. If you have any enemy, the enemy is the clock on your wall. Every tick of the second hand, you are getting closer. And closer and closer and you're not getting any younger my friend don't procrastinate today is the day today is the time to get up and do something with your life three years look into your life you've been on this same trajectory for three years no result listen if you have been on this same road and you're not getting there don't catch the road turn around am i talking i came to trouble somebody you listen there are many there are many isms in the world Communism, capitalism, socialism. But why have you added standstillism? Three years. When, would you when will you graduate, professional student? Three years, my friend. You wouldn't work three years. You are still there. No. You are not, you are not giving birth to be a burden. You are, you are, you, I, I can't wait for, for when we deal with saviors. Manifest saviors. It's one of our themes. There, there are things that... I'm, I, you, you have to find yourself that, listen, in your family, you are the savior of your family. Amen. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved and your family. It's not just the gospel, but it's also your life that you manifest to draw people out. Three years, you have sat in your comfort zone. For three years, the majority of human beings will live and die in the comfort zone that nothing threatens them. I came this morning to make you miserable. I came to trouble. The Bible says that you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. I want to add a little one, not to destroy the Bible, but it will first make you miserable. I want to trouble you. You've been like that for too long. Are you not, are you not tired of a colorless life? You've gone to church, you've prayed and prayed and prayed. You have even become a prayer. You have not even become a prayer project. This year is your year to manifest. <laughs> Listen to what the man said. The man said, cut it down. Why does he use up the ground? Listen, lack of fruitfulness, lack of manifestation is a big issue to God. If you don't use what he has given to you, he will take it from you. Last week I told you about the talent people. The one talent guy. He said, take it and give it to the ten talent guy. Because the one who has, more shall be given. And the one who doesn't have. Even the one he has. It looks like society. We get angry with rich people. We get angry with influ influential people. We get angry with people who are broken through. Uh, there, there's a particular culture. I want to live, live where, where I come from. It looks like every rich person became rich by wrong means. And poor people seem to know why they got rich. And why don't you use that same wisdom to get rich? Thank you, I'm trying to do that. He said, cut it down. Then the next thing is that the garden keeper, the vineyard dresser, he pleaded that, please, please, please don't do that. And I love this. I want to talk to somebody in three minutes. Then I'll begin to finish. I want to say that for the three years that the, the, the tree, you and I were unfruitful, we were supposed to be chopped down. But the vineyard dresser, Jesus, steps in to intercede for you and I. I've come to tell somebody here, ladies and gentlemen, that he is in your corner and he believes in you and he's telling the father, give him another chance. 
give her another chance. We have messed up for so long, but there's chance coming to somebody again. Don't sit back and resign yourself to fate. No, vow to read because there's somebody talking on your behalf. The writer of the book of Hebrews in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 24, 23, 24, 25, he says that the priest, the priest, they could not remain because of death, but he says that he, Jesus, he continues forever because and has an unchangeable priesthood. All the other priesthoods died, but Jesus, he died and rose forever and then he, go, 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 25. Let's, in the light of the, because Jesus never dies, he lies forever, he is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him since he always, somebody say always. always. I can't hear you at all. Always. He always lives to make intercession for them. One of the duties on one of the miracle ministries of Jesus right now is that he's interceding for you and he's interceding for us. That is why sometimes you may have done things and maybe you are even weak and you cannot pray for yourself and yet you see God is at work on your behalf. Why? Because somebody is interceding for you. He's not like you and I that sometimes we tell people, oh, I'll pray for you. Knowing that we will never pray until we see that, oh, Father bless them. They will say, oh, Father, I've been praying for No, he lives to intercede. He's at the right hand and what he's doing is that he's looking at your frailties and your weaknesses and he's telling father don't cut him down i believe in him give him another chance and do something i've come to tell somebody ladies and gentlemen that there's still another chance for you he's god of another chance you have been kept because his mercy has triumphed over judgment you and i could have lost our minds but he kept you we could have been taken out but he kept you people chopped us down but he put us back am i talking to somebody it is because of the mercies of the lord that we are not consumed his compassion does not fail they are new every morning every morning that the sun arises from the east even before it crosses the skyline and goes to set uh, mercy is speaking on your behalf once you're asleep mercy is talking on your behalf don't ever think that you have got uh, you have uh, outlived the mercy of God he's making intercession that this year you are going to be fruitful am I talking to somebody I don't know what you have done I don't know who is mocking you who is laughing at you but I think about a man who was born according to the predetermined counsel of God for him to begin to deliver Israel but some he made wrong choices. Some he made wrong moves. And he ended up in the hands of the enemy. He lost his vision, his eyesight. He lost the secret of his covenant, his hair. Instead of being a deliverer, he became, he became, he became a comedian in the, in the house of his, his enemies. And Samson was grinding instead of leading. And for days they were laughing at him. But in Judges chapter 16 and verse number 22, I like something that it says. He said, however, the hair of Samson's hair began to grow again. I've come to tell somebody that your hair is beginning to grow again. Your strength is coming back. What they took from you that made you weak is coming back to you. They never noticed it, but every day something will wake up and put a hand on his head and know that it is coming back. That strength is coming back. I'm telling somebody revival is coming back. Your prayer life is coming back. Your passion is coming back. Your business is coming back. Your ministry is coming back. Your joy is coming back. Your money is coming back. Everything that has been taken away from you is coming back. Something said began to grow again. And in verse number 28 of that same chapter, the Bible says that Samson prayed a prayer. And I pray that you pray that same prayer for yourself. He called upon the Lord and he said, remember me, Lord. Can somebody say, remember me, Lord? Can somebody say, remember me, Lord? May God remember you today. I say, may God remember you today. And not only remember, he must strengthen you. He said, he must strengthen you. That everything that has been taken away from you must be restored to you. In the name of the Lord. I'm talking about the restorer. He says that even your wisdom said yes I will restore the one that you are I'm talking about, I want to brag about this God because sometimes we have created a limited caricature of a God and we have told people God will never use you again God will listen whoever told you whatever they took away from you they, it will come back to you I think about Joseph his father gave him a coat and his brothers took it away from him Potiphar gave him a coat Mrs. Potiphar took it at exhibit A the next moment he was in a prisoner's garment he kept losing his garment but one day a day came that his gift was manifest because of his faithfulness and Pharaoh gave him a coat that nobody could take away from him. What do I mean? What is what, this? What I'm saying if a man promotes you, a man can demote you. If a man dresses you, a man can make you naked. If a man lifts you, a man can put you down. But when God dresses you, who can make you naked? Somebody shout and say, Dress me, Lord. The Lord had persistent hope for that tree and he has it. Listen, whatever it is, get up one more time. 
Falling down doesn't make you a failure. It is staying there that makes you a failure. Rejoice not over me, O my enemy. For when I fall, I shall rise again. The righteous man falls seven times. And seven or eight times, you'll get up one more time. People may write you off, but God will write you in. Who is it that speaks and it comes to pass when the Most High God has not commanded it? If it was left to you and I, we will never give people chances. But I thank God that God is not a man that he should... Let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. He said, please hold on. And then he makes a very powerful statement, Pastor Ben. He said, let it alone this year also. Somebody say, this year also. Oh, because, man, are are you hungry or something? I can't feel your energy. Somebody say, this year also. Is this thing doing what it's doing to me? This year also, my friend. Listen, he didn't say, I'm not talking about last year. With all the pain, the disappointments, the frustration, the fruitlessness. That is past. Yesterday is a canceled check. He didn't say last, he didn't even say next year. With all the unknowns, he said this year. I have an announcement to make, church. That this is your year. Somebody said this is my year. Can you look for two people or three people and just high five them and tell them that this is your year. Let them know that this is your year. This is not a cliche. This is not a plan. No, this is your year. Make a declaration, my friend. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. I know, I know, I know you, I'm included. I, I'm not divorced, but all of us have had interesting years. Anybody? That you wanted the year to just go away and forget about it. You know what I'm talking about? There are some years we, we, we just want to let the year go to H to the double something, you know, A to the double, uh, whatever it is. We want the year to go. Sometimes we, we think about some years and we wonder how did we even get here? It's like you are walking through a long, unending alley of darkness. You kill one trouble, seven troubles come to his funeral. You know what I'm talking about? But let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, some of us, I don't know about you, but I, chief, shouldn't have been here. I know some of you are bigger than God and you can control your life. But some of us look at where he has brought us from. That is why I'm telling you that going back for me is not an option. He brought me out of the miry clay and set my feet on the rock to stay. Asaph said that my feet almost slipped when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. And sometimes you look at your unbelieving friends and their prosperity and if you're not careful, your feet will slip. But Asaph said, until I went into the sanctuary of the Lord, then I understood. Let me tell you, your future is bright. In fact, it is so bright that when I look at you, it hurts. You may not look it, but this year also, God is about to intervene in your life. We are serving a God of suddenness. We are serving a God that can take you from the backside and make you a king overnight. All what you are going through is a preparation for your coronation. And so don't give up. He is bringing you all the way. I know you have cried last year. You have cried last week. You are not even looking forward to this year, but this year is here. And the God who has brought you this year will do some amazing things in your life. Do not give up. Do not give up. Do not give up. Am I talking to somebody? You have been hidden for a long time. You know you have a calling. You have a ministry. You have a business. You have a vision. But you are not seeing it. My Bible tells me in Exodus chapter 3 that when Moses was born, his parents prophetically saw that he was not an ordinary baby. They hid him because the edict of the Pharaoh was to kill all young boys. But the Bible says that they hid him for three months until he could no longer be hidden. I am telling somebody who has been hidden that this year is your time that you no longer can be hidden. The ministry is coming forth. The music is going into the world. The business is touching. Whatever God has given to you is about to catch fire. Don't you give up. It is too early to give up. God is up to something. I'm te- My God. I said God is up to something. Now let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me begin to finish. Let me begin to finish. The fin- your dresser says something. Because if we don't get this one, then everything that I've done is just exciting your emotions. He said, leave the tree alone. Leave Kerry's house. Watch it. Alone. For this year. 
I can tell that the vineyard dresser was not a charismatic Christian who goes to church in Loganville. We talk the talk, we don't walk the walk. Oh, I wish I had 17 hours with you this morning. I came to trouble you. He said, leave it. And I, I can imagine the father asking, so what are you going to do different? He said, let me do two things. And these are the two things I'm going to do with you today and the next installment. He said, number one, let me dig around it. Dig around it. Then I'll fertilize it. Dig, hard work. Fertilize, smart work. Dig, hard. You realize he didn't say, I will pray about it. In order to manifest, you need to resign from old, good heart giving but forty theology thinking. Religious mindset, apathy, inertia, forever waiting on God. That is the chains of religion and that is what is killing us. Everything I'm waiting on God. Meanwhile, God has been waiting on you for a long time. Now, when are you going to get God give me power? He gave you that power. What have you done with it? And we are forever begging for things that are already ours. That is what religion has done to us. That is what religion has done to many of us, a particular people. Chains on our minds. Mental chains are more, are more terrible than metal chains. But today, let me talk about digging around it. The chains of religion. We forever depend on miracles. It's one of the things that is killing the classical charismatic Pentecostal churches. Everything must be a miracle. Everything must be a miracle. You call for a business seminar, nobody shows up. And you say, there's a miracle worker in town. Every people who are dead, resurrect. They go for a miracle. What, why are we doing this to ourselves? Whoever drowned in their own sweat. The only place that success comes before work is in the dictionary. It's an S before W. Am I talking to somebody? He said, I would dig, I would dig, I would dig, I would dig. I have a question for somebody. You read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You cannot help but realize that it was full of miracles. Jesus was establishing something, drawing people to himself, showing people that. But go on, after Acts, begin to look at the Bible. Romans, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, all. Show me how many miracles you find in the epistles. I wrote here, they will keep quiet and stare at me, that's fine. How many miracles do you see in the epistles? Could it be telling us something? Give me Joshua chapter 5. Verse number 12. For six days, six days, for six days, every, every week, six days, and for 40 years, this carries house in the wilderness. They had manna, food. But in verse number 12, it says that the manna ceased on the day after they had eaten the produce of the land. So a time came that God said, you have eaten manna enough. 40 years, you have lived on miracles enough. The moment they rolled up their sleeves and they, they cultivated the land and they ate the produce, God moved them from miracles to responsibility. And I know you don't like it, so you won't say amen. Everybody wants somebody to do their dirty work for them. So they want the pastor to marry well for them. They want the pastor to, have, to, to do, do sweat for them. What is it? That, that is why people take advantage of you. Every, even the ones that you must engage your brains, you still have somebody to talk for you. Who feels it like you do? I know you keep quiet. This is the day, this year, oh, oh I love it, the quietness is beautiful. This is the day, ladies and gentlemen, to wake up. After the long prayers, after the long screaming, and all the different kinds of tongues and shades, give less to your prayers. Dig around it, dig around it, dig around it. The master is illustrating to you and I the necessity of work. Why? Work is an act of faith. I, this morning I clapped a lot. Mommy was like, why are you clapping? I said, I'll say some things they won't clap, so I want to clap for myself. Preach it. 
Pastor Kwame Frempo. I'm also learning. I'm also learning from Pastor. Faith is manifest in works. Am I talking to somebody? James chapter 2. He says something very interesting. In the 17th verse. He says that, that's it also faith by itself. If it does not have works, it's dead. I don't, I don't like this translation. I want a very, yes, I like this one. So then faith that doesn't involve action is phony. As a matter of fact, let's give another dessert. Give me the message translation if you have it. Do you think you get anywhere? In, it, it says that, where is it? Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says, it isn't it obvious that God talk, talk, talk without God acts. It's outrageous nonsense. I didn't print it. It was in the Bible. So don't look at me in that tone of voice. He says faith without work is outrageous nonsense. When I pastored in the United Kingdom many years ago, there was this guy, he, he, he said, you know, he had read a lot of Kenneth Hagin's books on faith. The guy resigned his job. He had a wife and two children. And people had said, I, I'm believing God. And one time, he was, he was in trouble with bills. He cornered me and said, Pastor, I said, you have faith, and your faith doesn't operate in the economy of my pocket. You live by faith, you die by faith. What kind of Christianity is this? That celebrates foolishness. Remember, it says that folly is exalted. That is why princes walk and servants end up on horseback. I was telling mommy yesterday that one of the things that bothers me, many of the world's greatest inventions have been done by unbelievers. So you should be ashamed to quote that there's a spirit in man, the bread of the Almighty that gives understanding. Why would a covenant man pick up a piece of stick and design it and put it in front of livestock and it produces and you are not seeing God talking to you about something? And you are spending all your life in a prayer meeting without action? Outrageous nonsense. I'm quoting scripture. Outrageous nonsense. Outrageous nonsense. Get to work. Get to work, my friend. Get to work. And but don't tell me. Listen, pastor, the, sometimes pastor, I'm going to take an exam. Can you pray? My first question is, have you studied? Because I'm, I will pray and say, Lord, give back to him or her supernatural recall. How do you remember something you didn't put in? I am pragmatic. I'm a realist. I don't come to titillate people's emotions. No. I want to tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Do you want a better life than this one? Then why are you sitting and doing nothing? All religion, religious mindset. God will do. God will, I agree. God will do, but he won't do it without you. When the disciples went out preaching in Mark chapter 12, uh, uh, Matthew chapter 28, I guess, he said, and they went everywhere preaching. The Lord went with them, working with them, working, not working for them, working with them. Do something, my friend, in the name of everything that is holy. This year also, do something with your life. Please, I'm begging you. Take that college course. Sit, you know, th this is called, I don't know his name, but glutinous marks. What, what does the biology? It has a doctor tell what is glutinous something something. Please, can you put it on wood and sit down until you finish that assignment? Can you turn on your phone for a few hours and concentrate on your studies? Today we are being controlled by people who don't believe in our Christ, but we are using their platform. Everybody I know says, I listen to you. I listen, especially on the Tuesday programs. I listen everywhere, in airports. People are telling me, I'm coming back home to America. Even immigration officers, oh, ambassador of hope, welcome. And it's like, Do you know, oh, I listen to you. The whole world is listening, and yet, at the end of the program, I look and there are only 300 people watching me. Why? Somebody is controlling the viewership behind the scenes. And we, what if tomorrow they come and say, we can't use their, their platforms anymore? Then we are going to, we bind the devil. No, bind yourself. Dig around it. He said, I will dig. I will dig. I will dig. I will dig. You remember the story of K. 
King Jehoshaphat and Jehoram and the king of Edom who went fighting. And they went around and around and they realized they had missed their way. They were thirsty. Their livestock was about to die. Then Jehoshaphat said, listen, I think we need some direction. Is there not a prophet in Israel that we can consult? He's talking about the necessity of the prophets. The necessity of the prophetic word. Don't discount it. Prophets are necessary. Prophets are vital. They are vital for giving direction to us. But after that, you must obey the directions that are given. Many of you people, some of you watching me, you go to every prophetic meeting. And the prophets tell you, this, there are people in this house, every prophet has told you the same thing. When are you going to let them resign from telling you the same thing? And tell you a different thing? For me, if a prophet comes here and tells me the same thing twice, I consider myself stupid. I'm, that's why I didn't say you, I say me. I hope I'm troubling somebody. And they said there's a prophet in Israel. They went to Elisha, remember? Elisha said, yes, and they, to cut a short story long. He said, give me a mystery. And as the mystery began to operate, the prophetic came upon him. And if it were to be today's generation, we'll be waiting for the prophet. Can you just wave your hands? Shokoloko bango she. Take a ride on my Honda. Rain, 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 rain. And rain is coming. No. He said, this is what the Lord is saying to you. Pick up a, stay, a spade and dig ditches. I'm sure if it were to be there, so this prophet is mad. I want water, you say, if I had energy, would I have come to you? But I said, dig ditches. For this is what the Lord is saying, that after you finish digging the ditches, that is why you see the miracle. You will not see rain, you will not see wind, but the ditches shall be filled. Not until you dig, you will not find the hand of God. I have a question, did God need ditches to give rain? No. So what was he saying? God is saying to you and I that if you show him your faith, he will show you his faithfulness. Do you want to be financially secure? Then why are you spending money like there's no tomorrow? A lot of times you waste money. From Monday to Friday, you are at work. Why do you need a premium bundle on television for? When you don't even watch it. Is that wisdom? When was the last time you sat down to watch television? You dare not say today. And yet look at what you have on your hands. You get all okay every day. You must have iPhone 16 Pro Max. And you are abusing the machine too. A cell phone can do about 3,000 chores for you. And yet we only utilize four. Hello. Did you see the girls dressing? It's not nice at all. Bye. We'll pray. I hope I'm doing okay, Pastor Sam. You want to be financially secure? Don't spend money like there's no tomorrow. Work hard. Save some of your income. Plan. Yesterday, mommy and I had a conversation with one of our, our sons, and I said, listen, this year, I'm going to give you a plan. I don't want you to be 60 or 65, and it dawns on you that you're about to retire, and you don't own your own home. I want you to invite me to the burning of your mortgage. Look, look at you. I, gave, I, led, I lead you by an example. That is why I stood here in shoe leather the other day. And I lifted the mortgage of this house. Four years or less, we paid this whole thing off. Everything. We don't owe anybody anything. I was doing that as an example. Do you know how many people have come, even last week, wrote to me, Papa, I've paid off my mortgage. I've done this. No pressure. Don't look at me that way. I'm a shy man. The Bible says that the borrower is subject to the lender. You want to be financial? It's possible, my friend. Saving is possible. Have a saving culture. You don't have to buy a new dress. Every I don't even remember what you wore last week. And if I, I did, I don't care. Because it didn't look nice on you. Do you want a great life? Then start digging. Put your life in order. There's too much disorder around you. Focus on your assignment. Focus. Drop on profitable relationships that spend all day gossiping about nothing. When we call for seminars, attend, take notes and go do them. Dig. 
Do you want a great marriage? Start digging. Communicate properly. Talk to your wife well. Respond to your husband properly. Now, honey, what do you eat? Food. What kind of food? Food, food. How's your day? Good. My friend, what's wrong with you? Love one another. Respect. You didn't marry your enemy. And for you that are not yet married, get yourself ready. Carry yourself well. Don't go to parties and overeat. People are watching. The woman is saying, hey, if I marry this one, I'll be cooking eight days a week. I can't do that. And by the way, by the way, maybe I need to talk into the television. Those of you who say, a woman, every marriage material has to do with, no, it also has to do with men. So we don't only teach our daughters, how, we want to teach our sons first to marry well. You should leave the woman alone and be a man. We put too much pressure on our women, disrespect for our women. Get up, iron your shirt, my friend. Wash your boxes. Don't let it fall into water and become like chocolate. No, wash it. Put on some deodorant, brush your teeth. I'm done, no more, no more. More bullets for next week, I'm done, for now. I have plenty, plenty. I don't care how much you pray, I'll still be here, I'll be back. Like, uh, is it, I know, uh, I know, I'll be back. I'll be back like a cyborg, I ain't finished with you. We have played for too long. We have played for too long. How do we take principles like this and live lives like that? Nah, there's something. I, 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 I will force you. No. I will force you. Don't come to me for prayer for some things. No, no. Even, don't go to Pastor Sam for prayer for things. And Pastor Ben. Send them away. Let them go and live their thing. We, 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 have, made, we have made our pastors gods. I don't want to be a hero in anybody's story. No. If you want to talk to me, tell me, Papa, the principles that you taught, I took it and it's working. Yes, one million dollars for you. Now we can talk business. I, I don't let people come. Let the first person to jump loudest, you will become a millionaire, then you will say, Amen. Next time I catch you, say, Do you see what I'll do to you? We have to be serious minded Christians who manifest wisdom. That when people are speaking, we must be sober and be, imbibe the thing. A man listened to me. I was passing in the city of London. Mommy will tell you, he used to drive as a delivery man for Ford. He used to drive. And one time I preached a message. I don't even remember which message. And after church, he went to buy the cassette. Anybody knows a cassette? <laughs> if you don't know cassette, Pastor Ben is your leader. <laughs> you are AI people. Anybody knows cassette? He bought two. Sent one to his wife, who was somewhere. And he said to the wife, I will never be poor in my life. And the wife said, how? He said, you listen to what Papa has preached. Sometime I was driving from the capital of Ghana, Accra, to do a seminar in the University of Cape Coast. And then somebody, there was traffic. There was major road construction everywhere. And somebody said, Papa! And I said, there we go again. I looked and it was a man. I said, Papa, your message that you preached, you see all this contract? He began to talk to me about it. Is that we should preach? I said to my wife, this, I will not drive this thing and deliver for Ford forever. I will do something with my life. This year also, will you dig it? Oh, I have a lot, but I'm done. Can you just take some 90 seconds and talk to God? Maybe something that really touched you. Can you talk to the Lord? Can you talk to him? Just 90 seconds. Something. Lord, open my eyes some more. Lord, help me. Maybe you are afraid. Lord, give me some courage. Let me step into this. This year also, 2024 shall be 2024 word. 
I want to go forward. I will progress and not retrogress. I, I have to have something to show for. I want to see myself at the end of the, of the year reaching my goals, financial goals, relational goals, career goals, educational goals, marital goals, whatever. I want to hit it. I don't want any carryover. People are waiting for my manifestation, not my explanation. Father, thank you. Jesus, Sadabush. Please sit. Please be seated. Please be seated.